and I'm really looking forward to sharing with you a little bit about um, what I know that's going on at the national level. Um, I am the Executive Secretary of the National Action Alliance for Suicide Prevention. It's a public-private partnership uh, that was formed about three years ago when Secretary Gates from Defense and Secretary Sebelius from Health and Human Services um, came together and, and selected a public sector co-chair, which is uh, John McHugh, the Secretary of the Army, and a private sector co-chair, a former senator, uh, and now the president and uh, CEO of the National Association of Broadcasters, um, Gordon Smith. Um, Gordon Smith's son uh, is the uh, young man who died by suicide and after whom is named the uh, Garrett Lee Smith uh, Grant Program, which uh, Guy is going to talk about uh, a little bit later. So for about the last three years, um, this uh, public-private partnership, really it's a coalition of the willing federal folks, a few state folks, and a lot of private sector folks, about 200 altogether, have come together to try to figure out how to uh, advance some of the national level um, issues uh, to prevent suicide in this country. And we formed uh, right off the bat about 14 task forces. Um, one of them was a group to look at clinical care and intervention. And so they were the clinical care and intervention task force. And so they started thinking about, well, we're going to just find these practices that need to be implemented um, across the country and we'll save a bunch of lives. And they started looking at, um, at models uh, where some of this had been done. And first they, they looked at uh, something that the Air Force did about 15 years ago now, and I happen to have been lucky enough to be involved in that when I was uh, wearing an Air Force uniform. And uh, the Air Force came together as a bunch of leaders and said, we've got a suicide problem in our ranks. And really the whole community of the Air Force just focused on this. And over the period of three years, in a population of about a third of a million, 350,000, the suicide rate dropped 80%. It's really remarkable. Uh, and then we kind of all went on. The Air Force's rates have kind of gone up and down since then, but generally have stayed lower. Then they also happened on to this uh, group uh, in Detroit, Michigan, Henry Ford Health System. And uh, Henry Ford Health System uh, decided about 10 years ago, they were challenged to provide really, they wanted to provide perfect depression care. And uh, I'll show you a little video from one of the leaders there, but basically, uh, they likewise, when they really went at this at a system level, uh, the, the suicide rate dropped dramatically. And so this task force, which started to kind of you know look at interventions and treatments, decided really that the way to get at this was system change. And I understand that that's really what you're talking about this afternoon is how to change large systems. And I have become convinced that you know, we can tinker with little things here and there and drop the suicide rate, you know, if we're really good at it, a few percent here and a few percent there. But if we're really talking about dramatically shifting the numbers of people in this country who die by suicide, it's going to take system level change. So this group then uh, kind of approached this from the system level and have created this um, this zero suicide approach, which really is a system change approach. And uh, we, they've launched this website. Uh, I wonder if I can, probably a way to make this a little smaller. Oh, no, that's fine. So they've launched this website, and it's going to be built out more and more. But it talks about, you know, what is zero suicide and, um, you know, not another life to lose. There's a learning collaborative that's forming. And so we have now um, several states that are working to implement systems change in the behavioral health component uh, of, of their system. And so I want to just play a, just a couple minute video here from Ed Coffey, who is the CEO of the Henry Ford Health System, and you'll get some idea of uh, kind of the background there. Our journey toward perfect depression care began back in 2001 when the Institute of Medicine published its very influential report entitled Crossing the Quality Chasm. And I remember a nurse raising her hand and saying, well, perhaps if we were providing perfect depression care, none of our patients would commit suicide. No one would kill themselves. 
So we embrace this notion that our goal has to be perfection. No defects, no errors, zero suicides. You start with this notion of setting an audacious goal, zero suicides, and then you work very hard to create what we call a just culture, a culture which supports people for reaching for the moon, but which uh, does not punish people when they fall short. We've reduced the rate from about 90 at baseline to now about 15 per 100,000, almost the rate that you see in the general population. And for two years, we had zero suicides. We're here to say that it is possible, and it's, uh, but it's only possible if you believe it can be done. So this was in, within a behavioral health setting, setting uh, pretty remarkable, would you say? And I can figure out now how to get, there we go. Uh, so as a result of this, what they learned at Henry Ford Health System and several states showing interest in wanting to do this in a larger scale within their states, there are now a half a dozen or so states that have joined this learning collaborative that are beginning to implement either parts or all of this zero suicide uh, uh, approach in their states. There is also um, national level groups coming together to try to figure out how to do this in general health systems, not just the behavioral health component. And I think this is what's really relevant here. Clearly, um, you can't do this without strong leadership. If you don't have the top leading this effort and really setting this goal for the organization, you're probably not going to get there. Uh, it's pretty clear that uh, clinicians without some additional training are not prepared to provide really excellent suicide care. Um, as you may know, I mean, most, uh, I think it's probably about, if you surveyed the, the mental health or behavioral health workforce out there, um, at least half of them, generally in large surveys, will tell you that they either feel like they don't have the training, they don't feel confident, or they don't have the supports around them to really care well for patients who are suicidal. So one of our models, particularly in primary care and in elsewhere, for suicide prevention has been find people who are suicidal and refer them to mental health professionals. Well, it turns out maybe you only have a 50-50 chance of finding one someone who really thinks they're okay, and then you have to realize that some of them who think they're okay, well, you know, maybe they're not what you would exactly want either. So leadership, training of the workforce are, 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 are critical. We have to develop pathways of care to make sure that once people are engaged in care that they don't drop out, there are no cracks big enough for them to fall into. And if they do kind of get lost in the wayside, a, a person who, who really doesn't care about living anymore can't get themselves back on the track. Our healthcare system has to go get them and get them back on the track. So we have to have a pathway of care that actually works for these patients. Um, and then we have to make sure that, that you know, we, that th those patients are getting evidence-based treatments. Whether it's treatment directly for their, the, their suicidal aspect, or if it's treatment for PTSD or pain or, you know, whatever is underlying, that we have to make sure that people are getting the evidence-based treatments. And then we have to make sure that within this system, there is a way to measure whether or not it's performing. Uh, one way is clearly to, you know, take a look at the death count. A lot of health systems, uh, unfortunately, cannot track deaths of people, even their enrolled patients. And in fact, one of the early criticisms of, of Henry Ford was that, um, well, you know, how, how do you know that you are, are aware of any of your patients that died by suicide? Did you check the, 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 the death registry in your state? And they had not. Well, they went back and checked it, and, and uh, actually um, they found out that they had counted a couple patients as suicides that, according to the official death certificate, um, were not. Uh, a couple, uh, well, about a year ago, um, we were meeting with the administrator of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Marilyn Tavener, and um, actually we'd had uh, two conversations at that level. And you're probably aware that um, CMS is really trying to drive down readmissions. 
Um, and we brought it to their attention um, you know, that a patient who dies by suicide doesn't show up as a readmission. So you know, if you're not looking for suicides, uh, that becomes a good thing to a health system. And so you know, we pointed out to them, if you don't have penalties uh, for suicides that are probably much higher than a readmission, um, you know, you, it's going to be hard to motivate health systems to make sure these people that are in their care um, don't die. So we have to have a way of measuring our performance in, in the provision of suicide care. Um, and that uh, is, is you know, not easy, but again, we've got people that are trying to figure out how to do that. And, and we have a SAMHSA grant this year. We'll be working with Magellan of Arizona. We'll be working with Centerstone. Um, they're a large behavioral health provider in Tennessee and Indiana. Um, and, and they're going to be developing within their own data systems ways that they could track um, their own performance in providing suicide care. So some of these things are, are bubbling up. We're going to have some models there um, that I, I think will, will be able to help you know, the nation uh, as a whole as we move toward health care reform, as we move toward accountable uh, uh, care organizations where um, we're, you know, we're just not focusing on providing episodes of care, but we really want people who are healthier get better care and, and at a lower cost. So we believe, we're pretty confident, um, but we're setting out to prove the case to be that when you provide good suicide care, you're probably going to provide more outpatient care. You're going to provide integrated care between primary care and behavioral health, but you're going to provide less emergency department care and less inpatient care, and so that overall, patients are going to be healthier, they're going to be getting better care, and the costs are going to go down. So I just want to uh, wish you the very best for this afternoon. I want to close this off with a short video from uh, Senator Smith, um, again, one of our, our leaders in um, the National Action Alliance. Senator Smith paid dearly to get into the suicide prevention movement with the loss of his son, and this is what he has to say to leaders in healthcare systems. The Action Alliance um, for Suicide Prevention is made up of, of advocates, of philanthropists, of business leaders, um, and certainly state leaders as well. Our focus is on action, taking the very best ideas uh, for preventing suicide and making them part and parcel of, um, of medical care in America. If you have physical health but you don't have mental health, you don't have health. And suicide is the ultimate failure in health health care outcomes. The first reason why CEOs ought to leave, lead on this issue is that the worth of the human soul is great. It's a challenge to health care providers in America to treat the whole person, mental and physical health. Change isn't easy and it requires leadership. And it starts with CEOs of health care systems when we get involved with this, particularly the issue of mental health, we're really working on the side of the angels. So thank you very much. Do you want to, a couple questions? Uh, Yes, so, so this website is zerosuicide.com. Um, it is um, going to be building out with more and more features, um, tools, and uh, you can kind of sign up and, and join in um, the, uh, the effort to, to really focus on providing better and better suicide care. So there's a question? Yeah, I do. I have a quick question. Um, Kelly Clark with Plana, Pennsylvania. Um, what it, we're trying to grow our... Um, referral base cross market with other organizations and partners that um, we may not be able to fit the need for our clients but we want to refer them elsewhere is there a way to be able to have links to this site is there propri proprietary regulations or um, 
how can we make this accessible to our clients? Yeah, this site is all federally funded, uh, zerosuicide.com. It's, it's open to anyone uh, who wants to access it. So we can post it on our website, on you our organization. Can. Okay, great. You certainly can. Thanks. Please uh, share it, very definitely. Okay. okay.